In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of Tequila Ocho Plata, right here on the Tequila Hombre, coming up next. Welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre. I know you've probably seen it on the shelves and wondering what it's all about. It is Tequila Ocho. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review. So we'll see how this is made as well as uh, the, what kind of flavors um, are provided by it when we do the tasting. As well as I'll give you some little uh, tidbits of information about the brand that you might be interested in knowing. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get into how this tequila is made. All right, let's get into how this tequila is made. It's tequila Ocho Plata. It is out of NOM 1474. The name of the distillery is La Altena. It is located in the highlands of Jalisco in Arandas. The master distiller is Carlos Camarena. Uh, they use Weber Blue Agave. All of them are grown on, in Carlos's fields, and they are single fields. So he, all the agave for a, a certain year's Ocho um, come from one single field. So they're single a field, single estate. So that makes it kind of an interesting thing. And I'll get more into that here in just a little bit. After the agave are processed, they're then cooked in hornos or brick stone ovens. Uh, and then after they're done cooking, they're shredded, placed in a roller mill, and they use the roller mill to extract the sugars from the agave fibers. Once the uh, sugars are extracted, the sugary liquid is then put into a wooden tank where it is fermented in an open air environment using natural yeast. After fermentation is complete, it is then two times distilled using a copper pot still and then bottled and off for your enjoyment. The lowest price to be able to find it for online is uh, $35.99. Now let's go up and I'll tell you a little bit uh, some more about this tequila before we get into the tasting. All right, we're back. And to um, give you some additional information, you know, I said they they harvest them from a single field. Well, this what they do basically do is every year they'll pick a field and use the agave from this field um, to make the ocho for that particular year. So 2016, it says Los Patos. So Los Patos is the... Uh, the field, the name of the field that they uh, pick the agave from for this particular year. Now, the reason why they do that is it, Ocho was basically came from an experiment where they wanted to see how the terrier, which is like your soil and um, nutrients and stuff within the soil from all the different areas, affect the flavor profiles of the agave. So each year they pick a different field <coughs> and make the tequila from the agave from that field and then you can actually compare the flavor profiles from uh, each field to see how the terrier affects the agave which is kind of interesting so um, I'll do when I do the tasting I actually have a 2009 um, one as well and this one is from uh, Rancho Las Pomez. Rancho Las Pomez. So I'll compare the Las Patos to La, Las Pomez um, when we do the tasting to see if we can taste the difference that the, uh, the terrier has in this agave. Now how did, it, how did they come up with Tequila Ocho? Well Ocho is eight in Spanish and the reason that how they came up with the name, there's actually a bunch of different things, but when Carlos produced the samples for his partner Thomas Estes, he um, produced eight samples. So that's one of the first things. Another thing is it takes eight um, years for an agave to mature. So that's another thing. It takes <clears throat> eight days from the time that the agave rhyme arrive at uh, La Altena in their patio area until it becomes tequila. Uh, also, Carlos has eight brothers and sisters. So there's a bunch of things where, where the number eight came up, and that's how they came up with the name Ocho for this tequila. It's uh, <clears throat> very highly respected and uh, highly regarded, and I'm looking forward to doing the tasting for you guys here and um, 
telling you the difference between these two and seeing how the terrier affects um, the, the flavor of the tequila from these two samples they have here. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the tasting portion of our episode. All right, now let's get into our tasting portion of the episode. I'll be using two of uh, the Stazel Harito uh, nosing glasses because you really can get the ar aromas and the uh, tastes from this tequila. I should have opened this up beforehand. This is a brand new bottle. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll, first we'll do the, uh, the 2016. All right, and let's take a look at this one to see what we get on it. All right, so we'll take a look at it on the glass here. All right, looking at how it coats the glass, you can see the tears coming down, the legs. Look at that. So it's going to have that nice buttery mouth feel to it. It's going to coat the mouth very nicely. Look, it's really good. The tequila itself, crystal clear. Look at that. It looks beautiful. All right, let's see what kind of aromas and stuff we get from it. Mmm. Getting beautiful cooked agave from it. So those baking spices that cinnamon and nutmeg are coming through. It's got a um, a grassiness to it. I'm getting um, kind of like fresh cut grass. Definitely picking up some pepper from it as well. It's got peppery nose. And it's very herbal. It's got an herbal smell like herbs. It smells really nice. <laughs> Alright, let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Beautiful the way it coats the mouth. On the palate, I'm definitely getting cooked agave. I'm definitely getting a pepperness to it, like black pepper. It's definitely um, grassy, like has a nice grassy. And on the end, I'm getting a little bit of mint, like peppermint on the finish. A very light peppermint. It's actually really nice. I like this. It's really refreshing. It's not um, overbearing at all. It blends together really nice. It's not overly sweet. Um, this is a beautiful uh, Blanco. I definitely uh, am going to take another sip. Mmm. <laughs> It's all there. Everything you look for in a really nicely made Blanco is there. I'm getting cooked agave by the tons right up front. A nice gr fresh grassiness to it. Definitely there's black pepper in there. Definitely um, herbal. And then on the end, it's just kind of weird. It's this um, like peppermint finish. It's very minty, which is nice. It's not overly minty, but just a hint of mint. On the finish, it's like, um, you know, it's not like those curiously strong peppermints, but like when you have a hint of mint from um, chewing gum that you've gotten rid of or whatever, it has just a hint of the peppermint on the end. Excellent tequila. I highly recommend it. I'm going to keep a bottle on my shelf. I'm going to need another bottle because I have a feeling this one's not going to last very long. Okay, so now, as part of the experiment, let's see how it differs from this one. So we'll put this one in, in the glass here. And see how it differs. I'm going to finish the rest of this bottle, I have a feeling, anyway. So I'll just cap it, put it aside. It'll be gone after the show. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's uh, swirl this around and take a look at this. This is 2009. So. Like when you look at the years, make sure you look at the years and the, and the field on the bottle when you go to the store, and that way you'll know what year you're getting and what field. There you go. You can see the, the tears and stuff on there. 
That one's not as, uh, it doesn't coat the glass as, as well as the other one did. But it's crystal clear on the, uh, in the tequila itself. All right, so let's see how they differ. Wow. All right, this is completely different. On this one, I, d I did get cooked agave. But I kind of get like a bell pepper kind of smell from that. Let me see this. Yeah, completely different. This has got more of a bell pepper. It's got more citrus on it. Yeah, this is more grassy. This is more earthy. It's got more of an earthiness to it. It's not nearly as grassy as this one. It, this one smells like a fresh cut lawn. Like when you put the clippings in your trash can, you get a good whiff of it. That This one has a good smell like that. This one, more of an earthy smell to it. So it's a little more subdued on that uh, side of things. This one also smells very nice. So let's see what we get on the on the flavor profile in this one. Mmm. Coats the mouth nicely. Beautiful cooked agave up front. Get those baking spices coming through. I'm getting a little bell pepper on this. I love bell pepper. So, um, but I'm getting a little bit of bell, bell pepper coming through on this. It also has... Um, a citrusy kind of um, flavor to it too, like um, almost like like lime, almost like lime coming through, like a mix of lime and a little grapefruit. There's a little bit of the. It's not as tart as lime is. Um, and it has a little more sweetness to it, so it's kind of a mix between a lime and a grapefruit for me. So that's actually really nice too. Very different. I'm surprised how different they are. This one was a, it was a lot more grassier. This is the, the 2016. There's a lot more grassier to it, a lot more vegetal, um, where this is more earthy um, and um, more fruity, which is kind of interesting considering it's the same brand just two different fields. So that's the kind of experiments you can do with this tequila is you can look at picking up different years and trying the, uh, the tequila from those different years and seeing how they change in flavor. It's kind of remarkable the difference in taste from these two fields. Well, there you go. I highly recommend it. This has been a fun experiment for me. Hopefully you guys pick up a bottle and try it and it's a fun experiment for you too. Anyway, I look at it, both of them, there was nothing off-putting in any, either of them. They're very solid, um, great tasting, they're excellent. I highly recommend it. You see Tequila Ocho, you've been thinking about buying it. Don't think about it anymore. Pick it up. All right, well, if you've tried Tequila Ocho, I'd love to hear what you think about it. Post your comments below. Let me know what, you, uh, what, what your experience has been with Tequila Ocho. If you uh, haven't tried it before but want to comment about the, the tasting and the information I shared, I'd love to hear your comments. If there's any other tequilas where you'd like to see me do a review, post your suggestions below. I'd love to hear your suggestions on what I should review in the future for you. Don't forget to give us a like for the great information that we shared. And more importantly, don't forget to subscribe because I've got some other great reviews coming up for you guys. You can't miss it. Also, we're going to be doing some big giveaways, and I want you to win. So in order to win, you have to click that subscribe button and subscribe. All right? So until next time, I'm going to raise two glasses here because both of these are really good. Life is too short to drink bad tequila. Salud.